All right, everybody. You're right about. Yeah. All right. First off, first things first. Um, I was able to get to uh, to see Little Hop Shop of Horrors on Friday. I hope everybody was able to see that because that was a a lot of fun. So great job to Dina. What's that? I was sitting right there, right where the edge of the light was, and my kids attract a lot of attention because they never stop moving. Yeah, we like, kept going over there. We were like, what is happening? Yeah, no, that's just my kids. They have that effect. They're just, they're a lot. We'll just put it that way. Uh, I love them dearly, but my kids are a lot. Um, second, uh, I think everybody, hopefully everybody got a chance to finish up doing the um, the midterm, I won't call it a retake, but the uh, corrections, getting the corrected version of it done and turned in. If you're not done with that yet, get it done as quick as possible because the material is just going to keep piling up. So get it done quick. Um, and I know there were a number of you who weren't here on Friday. If you weren't here on Friday, get it done by, by Wednesday. Use your work day tomorrow to work on that. There's a, a group of you that... Um, Good work together on that and get stuff figured out there. Um, and then schedule starts getting weird for the next couple weeks, right? Because we have this week and then next week is Thanksgiving and then we have two weeks and three. Uh, except I'm only going to be here for two of them probably because oh. no, because I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the schedule again. Anyway, it's going to get a little bit wonky. We're going to cover as much material as we can um, and uh, get you feeling good about types of reactions and equilibrium reactions and nuclear reactions. Those are the last three big topics we have left to cover uh, between now and end of January. Um, when it comes to now that you've taken one of my tests, the final is going to be a lot like this one in terms of I'm going to give you a practice test. We won't split it up into two periods next time because you'll have a two-hour time block during finals week. Um, so it'll just be one day, one and done, just like the rest of your finals classes. Um, and it'll be, this, like I said, you'll still get a practice test, so you should know exactly what you're coming into. Um, and, you know, figure out again, and I'll, I'll reiterate this, Get those easy points. Make sure that you get as many points as you can for the stuff you you understand, and then write something at least for the stuff you don't understand. I can at least give a point or two, um, but when you give me empty pages or drawings, as much as I appreciate drawings when you don't have anything else to do, um, I do look at those and admire them, but I can't give you points for them. So um, if you have spare time and feel like leaving me a drawing or a chemistry joke or something, great. Um, make sure you at least get one point by writing some numbers on there, right? Uh, all right. I think that's all we need before we get into today's. All right. Last Wednesday, we talked about hybridization. Who remembers how hybridization works? Or I guess remembers might be the wrong word. Did anybody understand hybridization when I first laid it out? That's reasonable. Yeah. It's basically you're just you're mixing functions together, right? And you always are gonna when you look at hybridization, if you want to know the hybridization for an atom, it always comes down to how many different orbitals do you need to mix together, which tracks one to one with how many electron domains do you have taking up space. Right? So and you always start with the lowest energy orbital for a particular energy level. What's the lowest energy orbital in, in any energy level? S. How many pieces does an S orbital have? It can fit two electrons, but really it's one thing. One is spin up and one spin down. So we consider those to be the same like, line. If we're drawing these out, we had an S orbital. We had energy on the y-axis. That line can hold two electrons, but we consider that to be one suborbital. And what's the next energy level or the next orbital in any energy level? A P, which can hold six electrons because it has three pieces to it. Right? So all that we really do for these um, 
orbital hybridization questions is, okay, look at how many things are there taking up space around the central atom. And then we mix together as many pieces as we need to get that many, that many um, functions, to get that many electron um, domains. So if we have something like CH4, where the Lewis dot structure looks like this, I guess this is the, the geometry as well. How many things are taking up space around the carbon? How many electron domains are there? Four. So how many orbitals do I need to mix together? Suborbitals. Four. Four. So that's going to be one part S, but the S orbital only has one piece we can use, right? So then we start mixing in P orbitals with the S. So if we need to get to a total of four electron domains, we need to use all three pieces of the p orbital as well. And so we just take however many pieces we need. If we need four electron domains, we take one piece from an s orbital, and then we start adding in pieces from the p orbital. And how many pieces from the p orbital can we use? Three. Up to three. Do we need all three of them in this case? Yeah. Yeah. So the hybridization on methane, on carbon, is sp3, one part s to three parts p. Gives us a total of four pieces to work with. Well, right, if we only have three things taking up space. So if we look at uh, CH2O, there's a double bond there, but how many electron domains are there? Thinking back to your Vesper geometries. There's three things taking up space, right? So how many orbitals do we need? Suborbitals. Three. three. So we start with an S. We only have one piece we can use. And then we start mixing in the P's, and we're going to need two pieces of the P's. So SP2. All right. So the number of electron domains, the electron geometry, is like a direct one-to-one -one translation with hybridization. You just mix in as many pieces as you need to get the right number of electron clouds around your central atom. So if something has a trigonal planar electron geometry, it will always be sp2. If something is tetrahedral electron geometry, it will always be sp3. OK. We'll see what we can do with that. How about HCN? What does the Lewis dot structure look like for HCN? That's when you might have to actually draw the Lewis dot structure yourself. So we count number of, if we put, what's going to go in the middle for HCN? Which one out of the carbon and the, and the nitrogen, which one's more electronegative? Nitrogen. So should nitrogen go in the middle or on the outside? We put carbon in the middle because carbon's less electronegative. Right? Carbon's got more vacancies. It's got, and it's less electronegative. So carbon's not as good at pulling electrons away from other stuff. Which means if we're choosing whether to put carbon or nitrogen in the middle, we're going to put carbon in the middle because carbon will share better than nitrogen. And then how many valence electrons do we have to work with here? One from the hydrogen. Four for the carbon. Five for the nitrogen. So 10 electrons total.